final pattern that I'm going to demonstrate for you on this tape is the DB crane fly larva. This pattern was originated by Dennis Brown from Logan, Utah, and is a pattern that, that is well served during the high spring runoffs and early season trout fishing. The body is a combination of glass beads, which are the medium size, jalapeno color, and these are the inside color finish. The beads are clear on the outside and have the color deep within them to give, the, give it sort of a transparent look. I'm going to demonstrate the bead weave technique showing how this hair is, lies in between each bead and the head is natural gray fur dubbing. The hook is a Daiichi 1870 and it's the curved larval hook which is another nice feature to this fly. We'll tie this fly up now. The first thing is to prepare the hook so that the beads will fit and that is to open up the bend of the hook a little more. I'm also going to flatten down the beads and just take a perineal nose and gently spread the point out a little more. And what I'm trying to achieve is the point of the hook in line with the bottom of the, of the eye. So before I bend, bend the hook, it's actually in a little bit. Now I just want to move it out a little bit. And I'm going to bend it just a little bit more to make sure I get my beads around there. OK. Now I'm going to thread the beads onto the hook shank. See, they slide right around there. Normally, if you have trouble sliding the beads on around the hook, it's because your, your hook bend is too sharp and you need to open it up even more. So I'm going to try to sh shoot for about eight beads on here. Well, I'm going to back that one off and put another one on here. Well, we'll keep trying here and we'll get this on eventually. Okay, I'm going to have to open up the bend of my hook a little more. I'm not quite getting all my beads on there, so it's just easier to do that than to, than to fight with trying to thread the beads on. There. Now, just to show you uh, that that actually works better, I'm going to go back to these other beads that didn't fit on there the first time and put them on. There you go. So that's four. If we'll go slip it on the last bead here, that should give us eight. As you can see, the nice uh, curve of the hook adds to the shape of the body. I'm going to attach the thread at the bend of the hook. Now I'm going to go down a little more. I'm going to wrap a little bit, slide that thread down. There we go. Trim off the excess. Again, you want to pre-measure the head length, bearing in mind that as you wrap the mohair in between the beads that it's going to spread the beads a little bit. So you want to make sure you give yourself plenty of room for that head. Now the mohair is, is gray or you can use like a light, light shade of olive. Tie in the tip at the bend. And then we'll do the whip finishing, hand whip finish at the back. several times. And before you get started with that mohair, attach the thread back to the front to finish off the head again. Trim off the tag. Okay, now we're going to 
wrap this around to make the butt. Also is our stop for the, the beads. And just move one bead back at a time. Come on. I said one at a time. Use your thumb to trap the yarn. Come around. Bring another bead back. Around. Every once in a while I just like to kind of use my index finger and thumb and push back, tighten things up a little bit. Bring the next one up. And around. You want to make sure that you wrap that yarn underneath and around rather than off to the side. Snug the beads up a little bit. As you can tell, the hair is beginning to protrude from between the beads. One more. Okay, bring my thread back. Lock in the mohair. My thread. Trim off the excess. Okay, I want to show you that on the bottom of the fly, you can see the mohair is nicely wrapped on the underside of the fly, which is the way you want it to look. And basically, on the top view, you don't see much of the mohair other than the fibers just showing up through the, the hook, or the, between the beads, rather. Okay, now we're going to uh, dub on the, the head using natural gray dubbing. And I'm going to use a, a dubbing tool. Before I attach the dubbing tool, I want to make a loop. So I hold down with my fingers, come back up and around, make a few wraps. And I've made a, a loop. This is called a dubbing loop. I'm going to attach the tool in there. So it's kind of a Y shaped. And I take the middle of the, this point and insert into the loop, and then draw it down. And then as I turn my tool, it starts to sp spiral up above at the near the hook. Turn that a few times. And then working with my dubbing material, I'm just going I'm going to start pushing it up in there and then I tighten down on the dubbing by twisting the tool. Just continue to push that in there and I want the hair to stick out so that it looks spiky. Continue to push that up in there, tighten it up some more. And basically the more you turn, the, the more sp the spikier the dubbing gets. Do a little bit more. I think this will do it. Okay, we'll try that. If we need more, like, oh, okay. Oh, that should do it. Let's try that. Okay, I'm going to slip my tool off. Go ahead and wrap that around the front of the front of the bead there. Now, as I wrap my dubbing forward, I'm going to pull the fibers back and wrap. Pull the fibers back and wrap. Move this forward to the front. Pull the fibers back again. So everything is going towards the back of the fly facing that way. And over wrapping upon itself. So it's kind of like wrapping a feather in a way. Okay, and then secure that with the thread. Trim off the dubbing loop. Whip finishing the front there to complete the fly. And there you have the completed DB crane fly larva. This is also a pattern that I have in, in my book, Tying Glass Bead Flies, being published by Frank Amato. And you'll find a host of other fly patterns that I've gone over today that are also in the book, in addition to well over 100 fly patterns that are featured in there in color plates.